um, hello ma'am and sir i think we should start now yes so hello everyone today we have two very esteemed guests with us chuneda ajiz and lee jian cheng uh, all the way from singapore and they are going to share their knowledge and expertise regarding learning apps for teachers now i would like to give a very brief introduction about both of them uh, junaida aziz has a 16 year long experience in the field of teaching and school leadership she is a subject head for it ict at singapore government school academic head of international schools in thailand and in indonesia and the assistant principal of the international school in cambodia um uh one uh she is a firm believer of the fact that teachers and students learn best when inspired and then we have our second guest lee jian shen who has an expertise in python python programming web development android development and games programming currently he is a teacher and facilitator for computer science at one of the most premium schools in singapore raffles institution mr jian shen strives his best to realize the true potential of every student by creating experiences he has initiated internships for computing students enabling them to work in tech startups we welcome you both to this next edutone by makeshift Thank you very much. Sorry for uh, the delay and inconvenience. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, hi everyone. Good evening. Uh, it should be around four fifteen in India right now. Yes, it is. Yes, okay. Uh, it's about uh six six forty five right now. So anyway, I hope you are having a fun Saturday, and thank you for spending the weekend uh, this short um, hour with us. Um, for today. the two of us will be speaking about learning apps for teachers. So without further ado, let me begin. Okay, first some um, housekeeping matters. For this workshop, it is preferable that you have your mobile phone and laptop ready so that you can fully engage in our activities. We don't plan to one-sided or one-way communication uh, format, but we would like you to join in in the interactive activities that we might have. Since it's interactive, you're welcome to try out the actions as we progress. However, we do acknowledge that some of our participants might not have their mobile phone right next to them. It's okay because I believe that the organizers will make this um, slides available so you can follow through the activity at your own convenience. And of course, if you do have questions, do type them in the chat. a uh, function in zoom we will address some of them at the end of this webinar okay next one before we begin with um the the lesson proper let's get to know some of you we are going to start using an app right now so what i would like all of you to do is okay Now just to let all of you know is that since this is an interactive webinar we will be toggling across some uh, tabs on Chrome on Google or uh, even um Edge yeah so what we need you to do is that to just follow through where we when we move from one tab to another okay so please go to joinpd.com and add in this code to join our presentation Sorry about that. Okay. Let me go back to sharing the screen. 
Okay, so we have a couple of students connected. So the rest of you who are intending to join us, just join us using uh, this code name. We, you can always join in later. So let's start with the slides. So for this presentation, you can either view the slides on this website or you can go back. Uh, yeah, you can use this or you can follow us on the Google Slides that we'll be using. So now let's go on to the next part. Okay, so getting to know you, we would like to know who we are speaking to and who we are speaking with so that we can tailor our, uh, the way that we present our webinar. What we can do now is you can drag on your, on your uh, phone, there will be that function that will allow you to drag to who you are. So are you a student? Are you an educator? Are you a parent? Are you a change maker? Ma'am, sorry to interrupt you, but some participants are asking for the password. Okay, here we go. It's here. HTFJU. Let me type that into the chat. Okay, it's good to see that we do have some students, we have an educator, we have a change maker. So we do have uh, representatives across the board for all the stakeholders of education. That's nice to know. Now I will go back to this. Okay, let's go on to the next one. The agenda for today. Uh, thank you, Vitira, for introducing Jensheng and myself. It's nice uh, to, to share uh, what we know and what we have been doing for Apps for Learning with all of you. We will also be going through a brief discussion on why do we need to use Apps for Learning? Why is it so important to get on board with the other educators and with the industry, with people who do use apps in teaching and learning. So we'll be using uh, Padlet, we'll introduce Padlet to you, and then we will go on to introduce Pear Deck. Uh, in the previous slide, all of you had just had a taste for what Pear Deck can use when in, used in conjunction with Google Slides. And after that, we will go on to Google Science Journal and Google Teachable Machine. And of course, there's always some room for reflection on how we can do better or what we can do advancing from the knowledge that we gain from today's webinar and the Q&A if there are any questions from, um, from every one of you. Okay, so we go on to the next one. So introduction to speakers. Uh, thanks, Ms. Hira. We've got, gone through this. Yeah. So why do we want to use apps for learning? Why is it so important? Uh, research has shown that it is a powerful source of learning and worldwide e-learning market forecasts that by 2022, estimated $243 billion US dollars to be spent on developing such technology. Apart from that, why are, apps, uh, why are all these apps gaining such importance? So I will not want to tell you the answers because there's no true answer, but it's more likely a discussion. So for this discussion, we will move on to Padlet.com. So if everyone can click on your link now to go to Padlet.com or use your browser to get to Padlet.com, it'll be great. Okay, so this is the view from my own Padlet.com. Padlet.com is another computer program or an app that is used widely by educators. Uh, it is free. Of course, there is the paid version where uh, the features are definitely extended. Uh, but what's important is that this tool is a very quick and easy tool for, for anyone to use, students to use when you collaborate with your friends, for educators to use when you want to get the students on board on the same learning page. This is especially useful in this time where COVID-19 kind of forced all of us to be at home and we cannot be there physically talking face to face with our friends, with our colleagues. So everything happens remotely. So Padlet.com is a really powerful tool. And if you are not used to using Padlet.com, I have never heard of it before, um, you can see the friendly interface. 
it is uh, quite uh, user friendly. So you can go ahead to create a Padlet. And these are the various functions, the templates that come with the Padlet. For example, if you would like your students to uh, chat in a chat-like environment without the need to log into any other system, you can create a Padlet that allows chatting to happen concurrently and instantaneously. Uh, or if you have a map when you are teaching a geography class per se, or if you want to pack your wall with lots of information on a research topic and there are different group members assigned to different tasks. So these are the things that you can come up with when you use a Padlet. Okay, so for our discussion, I'll go back to this. Okay. You can use your QR code or you can click on this and go to the um, pre-made uh, Padlet that I've already created for this discussion. I believe uh, my colleague uh, Chen Sheng will be uh, putting up the links in the chat so that it's easy for all of you. <laughs> so you can see that some of uh, we were testing the system earlier. For this discussion, I took it in a, a chat-like um, environment. The question is, in what ways can apps add value to your learning? So reflect. If you are a student, how do you think um, using apps makes your learning more interesting, engages you? For teachers, how do you think apps will impact on your teaching and learning, on the teaching strategies that you use in class? How can you use it in your daily lessons? How do you motivate students um, yeah, in any way? So please share with us your ideas. You can click here. It's good, we are starting to get responses. Thank you, Dennis. I see that it's for application for engagement, it's true. Let's give a few more minutes for our participants. Hi there. Agreed for group learning. So the other function of uh, using a Padlet, you can actually drag and drop links from the internet, your resources, your data that you have mined uh, into a, a, a board for everyone to see and share. Yes, giving the student voice is very important when we talk about a learner-centered driven kind of uh, teaching strategy. Now, for the benefit of everyone who is listening on to this webinar, um, just to let you know that this Padlet will remain active. We will, uh, we will let it remain active so you can continue putting in your answers. And what we are doing right now is we are also leveraging on each other's opinions on what apps can do to add value to your learning. However, in the interest of time, I will move on to the rest of the lesson, uh, for, of the webinar. So I'll go back to my presentation deck. Okay, the key points generally what apps offer, they provide very creative learning experiences. I'm pretty sure that uh, some of us have gone through school where the teacher stands in front in a very didactic manner and teach us, uh, we use pen and paper assessment. It was really very textbook driven, but of course in this uh, day and age, um, the previous one was addressing 21st century skills. We have seen that technology has been coming into the classroom more and more. However, there is also the advent of uh, Industry 4.0, where students um, now, when they leave the, the protected, uh, protected walls of school, we realize that they need a different skill set that requires them to be more than what we, the education system can offer at the moment. So this is where the technology comes in. Life collaboration tools within the learning community. That means that learning can take place beyond the school 
beyond your class. You can even link up with uh, students and educators from other regions globally. And this is what apps can do. And of course, it's an innovative and immersive way of learning because uh, you are required to give your own uh, responses to whatever problems that you're discussing. And the apps provide that kind of platform. So for example, augmented reality, there are apps, uh, for example, JIC, um, which I've used personally in the classroom. And what happens is that it was a primary school classroom and I used an augmented reality function where it showed the, the globe, the world, and a cross section of the world and what it looks like when the mantle, the core, and the different layers of the earth crust. Of course, I can show it in terms of a picture to my primary school students, but when I use 3D, um, sorry, augmented reality, it became real for the students. They were like, oh, okay, when I cut across the earth, this is what I see. And they begin to take an in um, interest and this is what inspires them to learn. And uh, the next part is student relevance and preference. Our students, uh, I think all of us educators do agree that our students are quite fast using technology. So they prefer to be engaged using such technology compared to just using a textbook. Mm -hmm. So because of this preference, they would want to, they endear themselves a little bit more to the use of technology. And in this time and age where data matters, the apps, can be a tool and later on Chen Sheng will go through with you how data is fed into a system and the computer uh, learns, a, a, a teachable machine learns and is able to produce output and solutions and even ideas on what to do with the data. And portable and mobility, I've just gotten most of you to use your phones. So when you're using your phones, it means that you can be anywhere and you can still learn. It does not mean that you have to be in a classroom or you have to be seated at a desk. You can move anywhere. And of course, it's a life assessment tool. One of the most important things that we know for education is that teachers will still need to find out how much of what we have taught has been um, imbibed by the students, have been taken in by the students. So this is where assessment comes in. So these are the key points on why apps do matter for learning. Okay, without further ado, let me go into the app itself. Okay. So I will go through the first part on the Pear Deck. You have earlier used the Pear Deck for active classrooms. It is actually an add-on to the Google Slides. So if you are familiar with using Google, Pear Deck offers an additional augmentation to what um, Google Slides can already offer, does already offer. So for you to be able to add on uh, for the benefit of those who, who have not um, used the Google Marketplace, uh, this is where you can try and experiment. We encourage all of you to experiment with these apps because the best way for you to learn and be able to be confident, uh, to apply confidently is to go through it yourself. Okay, so first of all, adding Pear Deck add-on, um, you can just go to the Google Suite okay, and click on this matrix, this, this icon, and it will drop down all the way to more from G Suite Marketplace. So let me show you. So what you see here is this Google Apps. Okay, I'll get my thing all the way. Okay, and if you scroll down, you have more from Google. Okay, and you can you can take a look. Of course, you will need to be logged into Google Suite. I did not log in in there. Okay, and what you can do is that after that, you go to the G Suite Marketplace and you add in the Pear Deck for Google Slides add-on. And this add-on will automatically be included in your Google Slides. So let me go into go back into Google Slides. So this add-on will appear. Okay, let's give it a moment. Okay, so you can see that there are plenty of templates on how you can get uh, the Google Slides to be more interactive. For example, just now what you have used is draggable. So looking at this screen, what the students do is that when they log in into the Pear Deck present presentation screen, there is an icon for them to move. And that is where you can get instant confirmation or instant results to the questions you're asking. Okay, so we will go to the next screen. Let me do a fast one. Okay. 
So this is how we use Pear Deck. And when you are done adding in, so let me add in. Like for example, I have a question to ask. I'll click on text and it in, add in, adds in the interactive questions. Okay, where you can write your responses and then you can start the lesson and when you start the lesson it will automatically go into this screen that you see where your students or whoever the audience is can log in to join your presentation and also interact positively and um, you know actively being engaged Okay, so let's try this out loud. Name one feature you find interesting in Pear Deck. So I'm going to give you five minutes to, to, to take a look at the feature if you're already using your computer and see what you do you think that is interesting in Pear Deck. And you can put in your responses right now. Okay, just for, for uh, your information, the Pear Deck presentation, when the teacher, that means me, has gone into this um, screen on your computer or on your mobile phone, the question will be there. So you key in directly and when you click done, it will appear in the response. Yes, we can see the value there. There is no need to go into another site like Mansimeter. And um, the good thing is being an add-on is directly embedded. So it's a one-time one solution. And for students, especially those who are in the lower uh, grade levels, it might be more manageable for them. Okay, let's just give a few more minutes. Yes, I agree. It does look nice. <laughs> And you can see that um, for most of you, if this is something new to all of you, uh, picking up the skill of using uh, this add-on requires very little training. So that is a good thing because ease of use on the user part. And that is something that we always consider when we are using apps in education. Generally, I understand and most of us understand that teachers are usually very, very busy and we really do not have much time to spare in terms of learning extremely complicated technology. So the easier it is to use, the better and the the more chances, the higher the chance of teachers uh, picking up that, that technology to be used in the, in the classroom. Okay, so we will move on. Next part. So for this next session, while you are also uh, still uh, exploring Pear Deck, I would like all of you to download Science Journal on App Store or Google Play. This app and the registration should take only a few minutes. So please go ahead to download this science journal and uh, Jian Sheng will be taking over the screen um, and he will be walking through the next two applications that we'll be using for this um, webinar. Hi everybody. Okay, uh, just let me take over the screen first. Yep, I'll stop share. Okay, um, right, let's begin. Okay, now that you have uh, downloaded the science journal, um, they might ask you for a few permissions to assess uh, some things. Uh, you want 
just go ahead and uh, approve them. All right, while you are downloading and approving the permissions for the app, uh, just let me go through quickly what the app is. Google Science Journal is an app that makes use of your mobile phone's uh, sensors uh, to record their readings mainly. Uh, you can use it for uh, science lesson, geography lessons, um, and whatever lessons that you can uh, think of. Right now, we recommend apps that are um, easy to use and uh, very efficient and very good to um, add into current lessons. All right. Okay, once you have downloaded the app, um, let me go through briefly uh, how to use and what is it used for. If you go to, once you have downloaded, uh, later on when you open it, uh, there's a few things you can see. Um, you can add in text in the, in the, in the journal. You can also uh, record sensor readings and you can also add in images. Okay, um, I think another way that I can do it is, uh, let me get, let me share screen uh, on my mobile phone. Then you all can uh, follow along with the app. Okay, let me uh, stop share first. I will use my, I will use my mo mobile phone uh, to share my screen. Okay, let me stop share. Okay. Mm, I think I need to. Okay, I think I need the access tracks to be a panelist. Um, I think the, I think I will just use the slides uh, first. Yeah, can. Okay, um, let's go on to the uh, slides uh, since I prepared them as well. All right, so basically how it is organized is that um, for every experiment or for every lesson, you can create a new journal. Once you have created a journal, you will be, you will be brought to a screen um, like the one on the, on the right in the slides. In the, in the screen itself, you can see there's um, the gray, uh, gray bar with four icons. Those four are the core functions of the of the app. In fact, I think the most uh, used one should be the sensor readings, which is the second one. Once you click on the second icon, it will, it will show you the list of sensors that you can use. So you can see the sensors. The first icon is a light bulb, which is a light sensor. There's a sound sensor. Yeah. Um, there's even accelerometer. Uh, you can even detect a magnetic field uh, using uh, the, the phone and every sensor you can see that there's a graph you can actually see the readings um, are being that you can see it being uh, fluctuating is fluctuating because is it, it is taking in the readings yeah but it is not recording yet it is just uh, reading uh, the sensor values yeah okay uh, let me go on to the next slide all right um the main thing you can do with this app is to log data. Um, to log the data, okay, right now when you see the app, the graph can see it, uh, being, uh, it, is, it seems to be reading a lot of uh, data, but it is not recorded yet. To do the actual recording, you need to click, uh, you need to click on, the, on the slides. You need to click on the record button, which is the big red button. Once you click on the red button, you can see the, on the graph, there's a red portion uh, that's shaded. It represents that it is starting to um, record the data from that point on. To stop, 
recording, you just press uh, the stop button, which is in the same area. Right. Uh, so I guess you can try on the app uh, as you as I go through the slides. Okay. Once you have logged in the data, you will actually show um, the, the graph at the point where you, you record. So uh, for example, uh, I record accelerometer in this case. You can see that there's a, a graph of all the readings. These readings, you can actually make use of the readings, the graph immediately. If, you, um, if you're on a mobile phone, you realize that you can uh, expand I can zoom in to the, to the readings uh, by, uh, on a mobile, mobile phone by just uh, stretching out. The, the way you normally zoom in using a phone, you can see the details in a graph. You can even download the data um, of the graph of the readings itself. If you see on your mobile phone screen, uh, after you have recorded, you, you should see an icon with three dots, uh, the navigation menu icon. Once you click on it, you have a download the data as CSV. And you can just download, uh, if you need the data, you can just download onto your phone. And you can open, a, open the data and it should look something like uh, the screen on your right. You know, with the time, time stamp and the readings at the point in time. Okay, so this is how uh, it works. It works the same for all sensors. So if you want to use the light sensor to do, a, do the reading, it will be the same. All right, now the next question is, um, how do I use it? You, will, you can actually find a lot of examples uh, online, uh, but now I, I found uh, one example that is quite uh, useful. Uh, it's uh, recording, logging the accelerometer for pendulum swing. Okay, so for this lesson, okay, the lesson outcomes is up to you. You can uh, recreate and rewrite, uh, but the idea is that uh, to investigate the relationship between the pendulum swing and the and the readings on the graph. All right. Okay. So uh, what you can do for this uh, experiment is that you can create a holder on a string. The holder is the to is to hold the phone uh, while you are uh, collecting the readings. Okay. So it can, it can be a paper cup and you tie the cup to a string. I can use a small Ziploc bag. A little, I will show you how I did it. Then, when the you're swinging your phone, you can record the readings. And for in this case, the length of the string, uh, you can change it to see the different readings. All right. Um, okay, this is the experiment I, I tried. So I put my phone in a small uh, Ziploc bag, and then I tie a string to it. Mm. Uh, I can't. Okay, can. So while it is swinging, I actually started recording. All right. Okay. So the actual graph readings is on your right. You can see the uh the accelerometer readings. So this is the graph uh that is uh, shown when the handphone swings like a pendulum. Yep, so you can do uh, different experiments with it and you can uh, use it for your lesson. Of course, there's a lot of other examples actually um, to do science experiment or like, even job lessons. Yep. Okay, uh, right now, okay, uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, do a simple quiz. Okay, so to join the quiz, you can go to this link and enter in the code. Then you can uh, answer the questions on the, on the app or on the quiz app itself.
Are you able to join? Okay. okay, I uh, I can't see the. All right. Um, I guess most of you should be uh, done with the answer. Uh, let me view. Okay, um, okay, I actually have the the score here. Oops. All right, uh, just a quick one to review the questions. Okay, the first question is uh, which sensor is available in Science Journal app? Um, the sensors available is um, accelerometer. Um, there's no there's no thermometer in uh, in the science journal. You can't take temperature in the science journal. And uh, yes, the format to download the data is CSV. And the you can actually read more than one sensor readings in one experiment. Yep, uh, with the app. Okay, so now let's go to, on to the next uh, next app that we're gonna use. Okay, the next app we are going to use is uh, Teachable Machines. Okay, um, what is Teachable Machine? Okay, Teachable Machine is, uh, is an online, online app. That means you can just, it's a bit like Google, email, and uh, that kind of thing. You can go to the link and you can uh, use, the, use the app immediately. Okay. Okay, what is Teachable Machine? It is a... Uh, computer vision app, so that's, uh, it's a computer vision app, it's based on AI and machine learning. So what it can basically do, instead of learning the actual uh, coding for AI, you can use the function of AI itself, computer vision. So you can actually teach the machines to identify uh, images, uh, sounds and posts. Okay, uh, I think right now it may not, may not be so clear. Let me go through an uh, example. All right, um, how to use the, the app itself. Once you log in, um, you can actually choose the three types of uh, project. For this case, we are going to use image uh, project. Once you choose image project, um, and you're in the, in the interface, the first thing you can see uh, are the, on the left are the classes. What do the classes mean? Classes means are the categories that you want to uh, classify uh, other categories that you want to classify your images of. Uh, in this case, to you, the first thing you need to do is to name your classes first. For this for this project that I'm going to show you, I'm going to classify two two classes. One is happy and one is sad. All right. Um, what I'm going to do is that I will use a webcam to capture the to capture the images. You can also uh, upload images if, if you have uh, enough, uh, but usually a webcam is quite a good option. All right, so I have two classes, happy and sad. Okay, what I did is that uh, for happy class, when I hold down the webcam to record, I try to put on a happy face for the machine to learn. All right, okay, I don't look so happy here, but I guess it is a happy face. <laughs> okay, uh, you should hold for some time, um, you should capture like at least uh, maybe 60 images. If there's too little images, the machine cannot learn. And when you capture the image, 
you need to uh, shift the object around for the machine to, to learn. If, if it's all the images are the same, it, it is not, there's not enough information for it to, to learn whether is it a smiling face. All right, so uh, the criteria is that there must be enough images. Um, I think 60 to 100, you can up to 100 uh, it is better. Um, but of course, it depends on the use case. Some cases may need more images. All right, okay, same thing for set. I try to put on a set face. Okay. So after that, once uploaded, what you can do after that is that the next stage is, you can see this uh, part called train model. What this do is basically, you take all the images and according to your classification, try to identify images. All right, so once you train model, the machine will do that. Okay, but what is the purpose, okay? So after I get all the images and record, I train the model. So what can the, the model do? Or what can the machine do? Okay, once the model is trained, the idea is that now the, the, the machine can actually tell uh, someone who is happy or someone who is sad. All right, so right now, if I put on a happy face in front of the camera, the results can be shown. So the output you can see a happy or sad. Okay, same thing, I put on a sad face in front of the webcam, it will tell me happy or sad. All right, okay, this, um, to make it more robust, if you can get someone else to check a happy face or sad face, um, that's what the machine is supposed to do, to learn to the point that even a different person comes in, it will tell whether a person is happy or sad. And if you notice the, the results, it is not 100%. There's a part that's happy and there's a part that's sad. Okay, machine learning uh, does not, we, we may not give you 100%, but you try to guess as much as possible. Okay, this is maybe 80% a happy face. And 20% there's a possibility that it is wrong. All right, so, um, but it, it is, you can see that it is mostly correct because when it's said the percentage is higher. Okay, so this is uh, how the teachable machines work. And for applications in real life, um, one of the more common ones is uh, medical imaging to identify cancer or some illness from all the scans that the hospital may have. They scan through the, the, the machine learning with the categories. And after that, when a patient with a new scan uh, comes in, it should be able to tell whether the scan or the patient has uh, cancer or not. All right. Um, then other, some other users that um, websites use is like uh, when you go to a e-shopping uh, website, sometimes uh, let's say I'm a seller, I upload images of my products. If I upload a handphone or I, I'm selling a house or whatever, if I upload a wrong image, it can actually uh, stop the upload and say that, oh, this is a wrong image. Okay. Uh, next thing is recommended systems. Means that uh, if you like, if you go to a shopping website or some other websites, if you keep browsing, uh, uh, let's say, for example, for in this case, I like um, scenery images. I keep browsing them. After a while, um, the app can tell me, okay, these are the types of images that you like. And they will recommend me the images. All right, this, these are just uh, some uh, options. Okay, but actually there's a lot more. And now it's time to test your creativity. All right, so right now you can write down your response uh, with machine learning, with this computer vision uh, ability. What are some applications you can think of? Yeah, you can uh, write your response in the pad deck. Okay, uh, maybe Junaida, I, I yeah. switch the screen. Okay, can go back to PEDAC for this, so I'll get the screen on. Okay. So if you are out of PEDAC, you can still go back in, joinpd.com, the password being HTFJU, hilarious turnips form juicy umbrellas. You can continue joining us, and you can put in your links. So, we have no responses at the moment, but if there are responses, it will show automatically. This is what the teacher will usually see, the, the host usually see.
Any ideas that you're getting off? Ah, oh, we have one. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, real-world uh, usage is extremely important because it is important for us uh, educators to be able to let our, uh, our students envision or contextualize their learning in and how it can apply outside. Of course, uh, school, being school, is where they lay the foundation. So you can see that the teachable machines is one way uh, that the app has been used to lay the foundation for bigger technology such as MRI, uh, coding, um, and using the recommender systems, Alexa, um, for example, Alexa does use the recommender system because it analyzes what you have been browsing and uh, what your preferences are and they can uh, even suggest uh, what kind of preferences or, or link up or, or make recommendations on where you should go uh, when you want to surf the internet or when you want to do some things. So I, I do use uh, Alexa quite a bit. So I know that I like certain kinds of music. So ta -da, suddenly they, uh, certain recommendations of uh, my music list has been altered because it is my preference. So these are things, real world applications that we can use. But in, in, in the school context, Teachable Machines is a very powerful tool that we can use. Okay, so uh, yep. let's go on to the next one. So uh, now we will go on to the quiz. So you can go on for, uh, for Teachable Machine Quiz. Just click on the link. Uh, Chensha, maybe you want to uh, copy this uh, link and the code so that our users can log in using the ch uh, from the chat. And, uh, let me yep. start there. Yep, I'll show, I'll show you how it looks like. Okay, start over. So. Three six seven six seven three. I'll close this. I'll close this, and I'll open a new one. Good. Oh, because I did not finish the other one. <laughs> yep. So you can see that this interactive portion will definitely appeal to your students because it gets them moving in front of the computer or in front of their mobile. So find a new quiz. So we have 367673. Can I join in? Okay. Okay. Yep. I have I'm some responses. You. Yep, you do? Okay, can you read out your responses? Ah, okay. Um, yep. There's some players. Um, so right now, I'll just go through the questions. Um, yep. Okay, so... Which moment can... Oh, okay. Uh, let me go back. I think I view the wrong uh, report. Okay, absolutely. So what you're experiencing now is something that when we uh, we experience when we conduct webinars too. Mm. Yep. As we seek your understanding, thank you very much. Okay. All right. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, there's some responses. Oh, okay. So I realize. I think we can go back to this. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, Jensen, maybe you need to read this the quiz, but we will go back to this uh, later on yeah. while Jensen uh, sort, sorts out the technical issue. So we go on to the reflection. So uh, my dear participants and viewers of this webinar, uh, we are going to use another function of Pear Deck. Students, draw anywhere on this slide. So I am also going to be logging in into my Pear Deck. Okay, again, you can log in. It's, it remains convenient. HDFJU, you can join in. Yep. 
Okay, and you can reflect in this way. This appeals to, to those of um, us who look at alternative ways of learning or have learning uh, different learning styles. Sometimes we do not want to respond in terms of text because text does not appeal to us. And it is a better idea for us to uh, diagrammatize or visualize our responses. So the drawing app, uh, enables us, the drawing function of this Pear Deck app enables us to give quite uh, fun responses. So uh, draw away everybody. Let's see the collective responses that we get. Ah, that's nice. Smiley face. You can also add text if you are somebody who likes to use text. Yeah, I have four responses. Again, uh, to our viewers on Facebook uh, and also uh, the rest of you who are uh, possibly exploring the apps on your phone, we will leave this uh, live um, for you to go in and um, update or to join in or to add in your responses at any one time. So uh, we will not uh, shut down the, the pad deck so that you can continue to contribute to it. And um, yeah, so uh, uh, I'll, I'll speak to Makeshift and see how it can be made uh, available to all of you also later on. Okay, so now we go on to the next part. Okay, um, yeah, the Q&A. So at this moment, if you do have, I know that this session is short, but it is a teaser for the apps that you can possibly use for learning. So if you do have any questions uh, for, for Chen Shen or myself or even Makeshift, uh, do let us know, put, this, put it in the chat group. And we will try our best to answer. Okay, we do have one on the chat. Uh, the difference between pair deck and zoom. Mm -hmm. hmm. Uh, let me answer this one. That's a quick one. Yes, sure. Yeah, sure. I mean, Zoom is mainly a video conference type of software where people can meet together and uh, do the video conf conferencing. Mm. So there's, there's no need for slides in Zoom actually, even though they allow share screen. Uh, for Panic, it's mainly a, it's an interactive way of um, a function that you can add on to your slides or Google Slides. So when uh, people, when you share the, the screen, it can be in a classroom or even over the video conference. People can participate in the activity that you, you want. Like just now, we can do drawing. Uh, we, can, uh, we can even do a poll. Um, yeah, so there's a few things. Yeah, so, so uh, at the same time, if you take a look at Zoom, uh, once this uh, Zoom session is over, unless you have been recording, the, the information is, is, is done. Yeah, but in Pear Deck, because it is a Google slide add-on, whatever information or resources or sharing that has been done will still remain on, on the Pear Deck in the Google Slides itself. So there is one, one way, a retainment of, uh, it retains what you have discussed. So if let's say that you are progressing from one lesson to another lesson, uh, Pear Deck and Google Slides is a powerful tool for, for us to go back and reference, to, to be used as a reference for the previous lesson. Especially if there are certain concepts that our students might not be familiar with, uh, we can always pull out from our shared drive and, and go through again some parts of the presentation. Yep. Are there any other questions? Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> thanks, Dennis, and thanks, uh, Dadit.
Okay, so anyway, we have come to the end of our presentation. If you do have any questions uh, and uh, there, uh, for, for, for myself or Jen Shen, this is our email address. Uh, we are a company in, in Singapore, we are AdMaker, uh, but we do work very closely with Makeshift. So if you do have any uh, questions, just email us and we will try our best to help you because this is a learning community and we learn best by uh, engaging with everyone. Okay, so yeah. like to give it an end, I would just like to thank both of you for spending your time and coming with <laughs> us online in this like weekend and yes. was quite informative and as you said was a perfect teaser to leave our participants very mm -hmm. inquisitive and with curiosity to explore the apps further mm -hmm. and the this is the need of the hour like these apps right now because we all are remotely working yes. and it is best, best that we can of course like face to face will be much more interactive but over these apps we can make the sessions more interactive Mm -hmm. Getting from like peer deck to Padlet to even the science journal, had we mm -hmm. got this in the school, the experience would have been definitely quite different. So yeah. thank you so much. And I hope, like I'm sure the participants will use the learning further to, you know, ideate and brainstorm together working in the teams mm -hmm. in this hackathon. So thank you once again. And to participants, I would say that the session will be uploaded within 24 hours on the YouTube channel. Okay, thank you very much. It was nice uh, being able to present to all of you. Um, yeah, keep the learning flame alive. Okay, and have a good weekend. Stay safe, everyone. Thank you. Same to you. Bye. Thank you. And we'll surely connect if any in case of doubts. Or okay, sure. Thank Bye. you so much.